Praise the Lord. If you would grab your Bibles. Amen. I like Bibles at church. So much better than a cell phone. It doesn't interrupt you while you're trying to read it. Amen. If you would turn in your Bibles to Luke chapter 4 and verse 16. That's where we'll be starting from today. Luke chapter 4 and verse 16. And we'll be reading down to verse uh, 21. It says, And he came, that is Jesus, to Nazareth, where he had been brought up. And as his custom was, he went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day, and stood up for to read. And there was delivered unto him the book of the prophet Isaiah, or otherwise Isaiah. And when he had opened the book, he found the place where it was written. And this is found in Isaiah 61 and verse 1, but it is also here and read by Jesus, the Christ. He says, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He hath sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives and recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised, to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. And he closed the book, and he gave it again to the minister and sat down. And the eyes of all them that were in the synagogue were fastened on him. They they just looked at him, and they were intrigued. And he began to say unto them, This day is the scripture fulfilled in your ears. If you would set your Bibles down, we are going to go to the Lord in prayer. I would like to talk to you today about you are anointed. Lord Jesus, we see and recognize that you came to this earth for a purpose. That you came, Lord Jesus, to be able to preach, to heal, to minister, to deliver like no one else had or no one else ever could. Lord Jesus... The Spirit was upon you, Lord, as you were upon this earth and as you moved and as you operated. And I trust, Lord God, that you are going to help me to impart an understanding this morning, that you can help, Lord, for all of us to understand what you have for each of us. We thank you, Lord God, and we give you praise and glory. Let's give him a hand clap of praise as you're seated. In Jesus' name. Throughout Scripture, Jesus is recognized as both the Messiah or sometimes called the Christ. These are synonymous terms, but they are derived from two different languages. Messiah is a Hebrew word found in the Old Testament, specifically in the book of Daniel. And Christ is a Greek word found throughout the New Testament. Both of these things, these words, literally mean the same thing. They mean the anointed. They mean the savior of the world. If you were to look those definitions up, they would mean the same thing. In the Gospel of Luke, when Jesus read these words, as I had mentioned in reading, he was reading from Isaiah chapter 61 and verse 1. We could almost read it, and it would be verbatim. Maybe some of the translating had been adjusted from Hebrew to Greek, but the same message was brought forth. Isaiah was prophesying of an anointed one to come. And yet at the same time, he was speaking about how God had anointed him to be able to minister. It was a twofold thing. Him as an individual, but also in recognition of someone to come. We have confirmation that Jesus was this anointed one. From what it says in the book of Acts. In Acts chapter 10, verse 38, it says, How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth. Wait, we just talked about Jesus of Nazareth in Luke 4. How he anointed Jesus of Nazareth with what? The Holy Ghost. And with what? Power. What did it give him capability to do? It allowed him to go about doing good, it says, and healing all that were oppressed of the devil. Why? For God was with him. God was 
with him. You see, Jesus was anointed with the very Holy Ghost that is resident within our very beings. If you have received the gift of the Holy Ghost with the evidence of speaking with other tongues, then I will say, you are anointed. You have the Spirit of God. You have that approval upon your life. You have power. You have ability unlike any other human being that walks across the face of this earth. Why? Because you're anointed with the gift of the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost has such power to give you the ability to do good. It gives you such power to heal. It gives you such power to see deliverance from oppression from the devil and things of this world. You have an anointing. But do we use it? That is the question. It is not just enough to have an anointing or to be anointed. It is not just enough to have the Holy Ghost or to have it filled and resident within our lives. It's not just enough to be there and pray and to do and go through the motions. But I must be operable. I must have it moving. I must have it living and dwelling and operable as only it can. I must have it be as such. Why did it operate in that way? Because God was with him. The Holy Ghost is nothing other but the Spirit of God resident with an individual. It is God's being inside a person, a human soul. You see, in the Old Testament, things were anointed to show that God had his Spirit working with that individual. The priesthood, you can go through Exodus, you can go through Leviticus, you can go even in through Numbers and Deuteronomy, and over and over again, the priesthood was anointed for a specific purpose, for a specific will of God, so that they could do the work of the ministry, so that they could have a vested power that went with them as they operated. You see, the tabernacle, the very items within the tabernacle, each one was anointed with oil just as the priests were. All that was within the tabernacle was anointed so that it was made holy or separate for the Lord's use. When the Holy Ghost came upon your life, you became separated for his workmanship. You became separated for his usefulness. You became different. You became... Uh, You'd go through work, you'd go through school, you'd go through life, and you recognize you're not like everybody else anymore. You can't go to the grocery store and can't help but feel that you're special because you got something inside of you. That's how I feel. And not to say that I'm greater than anyone else because I'm not. But what's inside of me is. What's inside of me gives me power. What's inside of me makes me special. It makes me that royal priesthood. It gives me that kingship. It gives me that, that authority and that connection to the high priest being in the priesthood because of the anointing. Because of the anointing. You see, not only was the priesthood often anointed or the tabernacle and the, and the furniture in which they operated, not just their ministry and not just the individual, but also kings, leaders, Men who would operate under the governance of God in governing his people. They were anointed. You can read about it for Saul and David and many others who were anointed countless through the Bible of these kings. And as they were anointed, it gave them a specific favor and power to do the will of God. When each of these people, whether priests or kings, or items like the tabernacle furniture was anointed, a man of God, usually a prophet, would anoint. To anoint was to smear or to pour out that which was the oil upon the individual from the top of their head, so the beginning of who they were to the very bottom of who they were, from their authority down to their humility. Every part of who they were was supposed to be covered in the anointing. And likewise, we the same must have ourselves covered. From that point, they became God's ordained worker or vessel. Special power, privilege, and authority was bestowed upon them for the glory of God. Not their own glory, but the glory of God. For his workmanship, for his goals, for his design. You see, throughout the New Testament, Jesus Christ is recognized as the high priest. 
And the king of kings, or the king of the Jews, it recognizes him specifically as the high priest in Hebrews chapters 5 and Hebrews chapters 9. And the king of kings, or king of the Jews, in Revelation 17, Revelation 19, in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Every gospel gives credence to the kingship of Jesus Christ over the Jews. It's explicit. It's right in your face that he was the anointed king and he was the anointed high priest. But I want to tell you today he was also the prophet in that he was the anointer. He was the one anointing himself to be the king to the people. He was anointing himself to be the priest to the people, the intermediary. And since he is the ultimate king, and since he's the ultimate priest, and since he's the ultimate prophet, he is then able to also anoint you, and you, and you for his workmanship, for his use, for his purpose. Just as the prophets of old, as Samuel came up to David, and he said, I pour this upon you, you're going to be the king of Israel, thus saith the Lord. The same thing happens for us. Where we become his royalty. We become his warriors. We become his kings and his queens. And we become his priests, his workmanship. Why? Because we become anointed. I want you to recognize something. The only way that the anointing can begin to flow on your life is if you become humble to it. You see... Many times, and in pictures even, you'll hear about how the individual being anointed would get on their hands and knees before the man of God. And only in that place could they be able to receive that anointing. If they were higher than the man of God and didn't submit themselves to them, no anointing could flow. I need to get behind my men of God. I need to get behind my leadership because that's the only way I'm going to see the anointing flow through my life. And so there are certain principles that we see with the anointing. But as I was saying, with Jesus Christ, he was the truly the anointed one. It says in Colossians 2.9 that in him dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. Every part of him was both man fully man and fully God. He encaptured, he held on to every entity of who and what God was and is. Why? Because he was fully God. The totality of God dwelt within the being of Jesus Christ. There had never been a priest, there had never been a king who could match this deified perfection. And there never will be besides Jesus Christ. Before the time of Jesus, all priests and kings that were anointed would have the Spirit, it say, says, move upon them. It would move upon them. It would cause them to do something. It would move in an exterior fashion upon their being. But never had it ever moved within them. We have such a wonderful opportunity. A wonderful opportunity to have the Spirit the Spirit of God begin to stir within our very souls. We begin to allow it to operate in a fashion like the priests never could be able to have experienced, like the prophets could have only desired, like the kings could have only imagined. Why? Because of the outpouring of the Holy Ghost. Because of the outpouring of the Holy Ghost. And that's why I'm excited today. Because I can really and truly say, yes, I am greater than that of John. Yes, I am greater than that of the prophets of old. Why? Not because of me, but because of what is residing, what is moving, not on me, but in me. In me this morning. And he can move in you. Why? Because you are anointed. You are anointed for his work. And when we can capture that and we can realize that, we'll be the strongest, most powerful, anointed source in the entire universe. We'll be able to move the resources of God and see things happen. For the prayers that we pray every single week, every Sunday, every Sunday morning, every Sunday night, every Wednesday, every time you get into your prayer closet, your mind and your heart and your soul and your prayers can move resources. Why? Because you're anointed. You have power. You have ability. You can do it. Not because you have 
your flesh, not because you are a man or a woman, because you have God with you, not just with you and moving on you, but in you. That's what we have, and that's what we have to realize in this day and hour more than anything else, because it says that there's a spirit of the Antichrist that's moving, and it's operating in this day and age. Well, we need men with the spirit of God. We need women with the spirit of God. I need you to be anointed. I need me to be anointed. I can't just go through the motions. I need to be crushed a little bit to allow it to flow. I might have to go through a hardship to allow that oil to flow within my life. But you know what? If I allow it to flow, there's going to be miraculous things. The wonderful thing about oil is this. It's used in multiple facets throughout the word of God. It was used for the bread. For bread, in the anointing, they would put the oil within the bread so that they would be water and oil and flour and they would mix it all together. The flour represents your flesh. The oil represents the Spirit of God. And when those begin to congeal together, you have a substance that is capable of being imparted to others. It can begin to be eaten. And that showbread was in the tabernacle, and it was anointed. It had oil within it. So your word, your being, when you allow the word and the Spirit of God to come in upon your life, becomes anointed. Not only that, but the altar of incense was there. What did they use for the incense but oil? And they mixed it with myrrh and frankincense and different uh, substances so that it would create a sense of worship unto the Lord. So where are you anointed? But in your worship. Where else are you anointed? It says that the candlestick had oil that was poured into it so that it could be able to light the tabernacle. You are anointed in revelation and in understanding but do we take full credit, and do we take full uh, capability of it, and do we allow it to work within our lives? Sometimes no. What was happening in the priesthood, what was happening in that tabernacle, was a sign of what is happening today. His words anointed, his revelation, and his spirit moving is anointed. Our worship, when we sincerely do it, is anointed. But sometimes we can allow some things to get into the oil. We can leave it out for it to be disturbed. We can allow it to maybe just take what we need for the moment. But like we heard last Sunday, we maybe not taking some reserves. We're not allowing ourselves to be overflowed for the next day and the next day. But I want you to know today that you're anointed. It says in 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 21, Now he which stableth us with you in Christ hath anointed us is God. The one who has anointed you, just like they anointed Jesus, is God Almighty. He's anointed his church. And although you might be fully man or woman, you can be fully filled with the anointing of God. In 1 John chapter 2, verse 27, it says, but the anointing which ye have received of him, it abideth in you. It doesn't say upon you. It says in you. Ye need not that any man teach you, but as the same anointing teacheth you of all things, and is truth, and is no lie. And even as it hath taught you, ye shall abide in him. Here's the thing about anointing. You can't just have the anointing abide in you, but you have to abide in it. You can't just expect God to try to abide within your life without you trying to abide in it. So many times we go throughout the day and think, you know what, I have Jesus living in me. I can go this place. I can do this thing that might not be in the word or approved of. And think, I'm okay. I can do it. But he asks us, I don't want to just abide in you but I want you to abide in me. I want you to abide in my presence. So what is that but saturation? Saturation, where if the oil is not just on the inside, but it's on the outside, where it is completely who we are. It has permeated our very being, where it's not just here, 
but it begins to shine itself on who we are in character, in holiness, in beauty of the Lord. Why? Because we have him not only abiding in us, but we're abiding in him. We can see that the church is capable of having the anointing abide within them and that they are capable of abiding in him. In John chapter 14, verse 26, Jesus spoke this, but the comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things. Wait a second, that sounds just like what we heard in 1 John chapter 2, verse 27. He said that there would be anointing that would abide in them. And what does it say right after that? He shall teach you all things. You need not that any man teach you. Why? Because the Holy Ghost is going to begin to teach you as you read the word. As you hear the preached word, you're going to be able to hear the anointing. You're going to be able to hear the word of God and how it ministers directly to your soul. That's why when I come to church, I'm typing away. I'm writing uh, until the, the page is turning and getting on fire because there is things that are coming from the man of God or they're coming from the teaching or they're coming from the preaching that are speaking to me that I want to hold on to, that I want to reread again, that I want to go home and I want to be able to have it there for me. So when I go to prayer, it's the same thing. There might have been something I read a month ago and I'll begin to pray. And I might be pacing back and forth, or I might be knelt down at the couch, and I might just stop for a moment, and that scripture will come right to my mind. And you know what? I'll understand something like I never understood it before. Why? Because the Holy Ghost, the anointing, begins to teach you things you would have never seen or known or heard before. If we allow the anointing to flow in our lives, it will do that. It will begin to give us intricate understandings that we ourselves in our human nature could never understand. It says in Acts chapter 2 verse 4 that they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and they began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. You see, God's Spirit filled the people who were in that room. They were filled. They weren't just moved on as prophets, priests, and kings of the Old Testament. But these men and women had the habitation or became the habitation for the anointed one to dwell. In 1 Corinthians 3, 9, it says that we are laborers. We're his workmanship together with God. Ye are God's husbandry. Ye are God's building. You're his habitation. You are that which he wants to dwell in, but also work with. So inside and outside, he wants to be in and with you. In 1 Corinthians 3.16, a little further down in that chapter, it says, know ye not that ye are the temple of God? Do you not realize what you are? You are greater than the tabernacle. And I preached this a while back, but you're greater than the tabernacle. You're greater than the temple. You're greater than any other substance of, of housing that God has ever manifested his spirit within. You are a child of God. And that time, I try to give credibility to the temple, you. But today, I want to give a little bit of credibility to what's inside of you which is the Holy Ghost. It's his anointing. It's his approval. It's his power. It's his glory. And that the Spirit of God dwelleth in you. The Word of God lets us know that the Holy Ghost is the anointing agent of God's Spirit within our lives. When Jesus was the anointed of the Holy Ghost, otherwise the Messiah, when he was the Christ, he had power to do good. He had power to heal and to deliver, as it said in Acts 10. When we receive Jesus Christ, the anointed into our lives, as the Holy Ghost, we too have power. You have power to do good. You have power to heal. You have power to deliver. You have power within yourself to receive and be able to do good. You have power within yourself so that you can be healed. You have power within yourself so you can be delivered from that addiction or that hardship or that strain. You might have it. I don't maybe know everything that you're going through, but I know that I've been delivered on some things and I know that you might have some things that you need to be delivered of too. I don't know if it's drugs. I don't know if it's alcohol. Maybe you're seeing things you shouldn't be, but whatever the case is, the Spirit of God can give you the power to overcome that 
thing, that oppression, that depression, that hurt, that pain that is dwelling with inside your body and cast it out. It said that it would deliver them from the oppressed. I believe that. I believe that in this day and hour. I believe that for this church. Why? Because you are anointed. You are anointed with the Spirit of God. You see, in Luke 24, 49, Jesus told them that they would be endued with power from on high. In Acts 1 and 8, Jesus told them that the church would receive power after the Holy Ghost came upon them. And not did it just come upon them, but we find out that it filled them. Then throughout the book of Acts, we see how the anointing of the Holy Ghost worked in the lives of Jesus' disciples. I wish I had time to reference every single one. I have four or five references that reference his power to witness through them. This power to heal the sick, to preach and to teach, to raise the dead, to deliver the captives, just as Jesus had when he was upon this earth. Ordinary men and women were capable of these very things. Peter was a fisherman. Many of you have attended college. Many of you are very educated. And you do not do fishing for a profession. You make much more money than probably Peter did, even in a percentile marker. Yet he was able to get a hold of something. Maybe it took him getting to a place of humility to be able to really, truly get a hold of it. That he had to be so low that he could actually be able to be used. And just as I had mentioned earlier, to be anointed, I need to get low. I need to be humbled. It's in the place of crushing, it's in the place of loneliness that I receive the anointing. And it can begin to flow upon my life. When I get out from under it, I'm ineffective. When I get out from under it, I can't do a thing. The power is not there. The source is not there. The ability is not there. I remember it was college days a few years back, and we were in that chapel, and it stirs me up every time I think about it. But I remember being to the, to the north side of the chapel on the uh, guy side and was looking at the preacher who was preaching. It was actually one of our own students. And I began to weep at what I saw. Because I saw a cloud right above the head of the individual who was preaching. And as he began to preach, and as he began to go, I saw two hands with a vessel begin to pour a substance upon his head. Now, I don't believe in hocus pokey and spooky wookie and whatever else, but I do believe in the supernatural. I do believe in God, and I do believe in angels, and it says it in his word. And I saw this pouring out take place, and I, and I waited for it, and I just continued to weep and continued to weep, and I continued to weep, and I was waiting. When was it going to stop? But it just continued. I thought the vessel would not be able to contain it for how much was being poured out but it just kept pouring and as it continued to pour I saw it to begin to seep over the platform and as it seeped over the platform it began to come and it began to dwell within those who were in the congregation there and it began to hit one after the other every person that was in that chapel service and the spirit of God began to move I don't understand it but I felt it and I saw it and I began to weep as I saw from the front right there with the platform sweep across into the very back why that was a student that was a kid that was a child how much more for us? How can we do this? If we would just get under the anointing of God, if we would just humble ourselves in prayer, if we would just seek the face of God every once in a while on a daily basis, maybe it's 10 minutes. That's nothing. I've spent 10 minutes watching YouTube videos. That's a waste of my time. Nothing added to me. But I can get something, a resource that no one else can give me, that no one else can be able to bless me with, but the endowing, the endowment from God on high onto me in my life. That's the only place I can get it, is from him. I want that. Now, Jesus may not be physically present in this day and time and hour. 
but he's resident within you. He's walking and moving and operable within you and your life if you'll let him. I just want you to remember some things. And if one thing you remember as you leave this place today, you are anointed. You're anointed. If we would all stand in this place. It says in James chapter 5, 16, towards the latter part of that verse, the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man and or woman availeth much. And we're going to have a time of prayer. And I, I don't want just a pat a cake Pentecostal sort of prayer where you just go through the motions. And I'm not saying that you have to be extremely loud. Because anointing is not in the loudness. Anointing is not in how much you shout. Anointing is not in how much you run or shake or move or this or that. Anointing is in the right spirit. Anointing is a thing of the heart. And if it's in the heart, it's going to come out and it's going to flow. But I want you to remember you are anointed and that if you have received the gift of the Holy Ghost with the evidence of speaking in other tongues, then you are and you should know that you are anointed. So now is the time to use that anointing, to leave this place and allow it to operate as it should. You see, I'm ready for the supernatural. Our students are ready for the supernatural. I'm ready for healings and miracles. I'm ready for outpourings of the Spirit of God like we've never seen in this church. Upon thousands, upon this city. You see, I'm, I'm ready for blind eyes to be opened, deaf ears to hear. I'm ready for deliverance of people who are bound by drugs and addiction. We have a young man that attends this church coming this summer will be his year anniversary of having attended this church when he came here he was addicted to drugs he doesn't even have an ounce of addiction within his body towards those things when did that happen when the anointing of the Holy Ghost came upon his life it happens in this church maybe we don't hear about it enough but that's why I'm here to speak it today. I'm ready for principalities of darkness to be subjected to the prayers of righteous men and women of God. I am ready and I'm expectant. And if you've heard the words that I've spoken this last moments, I want that to be your prayer. And I know it can happen, all these things, because you and I are anointed. So if you would come. There are those here also who are not anointed. Maybe you have never received the gift of the Holy Ghost in your life. You've never spoke in other tongues. Today is a day to come and humble yourself under the anointing of God. Today you can receive that supernatural power that only comes from Him. There's an altar here. Whether you're old or new, there's a time for the anointing to flow. Oh, Lord Jesus, I ask that your anointing would flow upon this church. They've been submissive. They've heard the word. They've worshipped you. They've praised you. They've allowed these things to come into their hearts, Lord God. And, and they have conditions and they have needs and they have things that they are dealing with. But Lord, we recognize that we come in humility. We come before you, Lord Jesus, as your priests, as your workmanship. We come as your kings, as your leaders. We come, Lord Jesus, to do your will and to work, Lord, as only you can in our lives. We, we do what you ask us to. Lord Jesus, I ask that you would pour out your spirit upon them. 
in a greater way than ever before so that they could do good not only in their own lives but for others that they could see healing if they have a need in their physical bodies today that they would be able to receive it and they would be able to lay their hands on the sick and see them recover and if there be any sin that it would be remitted that it would be forgiven them and also deliverance Jesus for their own lives and for the lives of the people that they pray for that we could see it in this church for the individuals in this church for the people that this church is praying for family friends loved ones co-workers people that they just have a burden for cities counties states and nations oh lord god your anointing lord jesus we desire your anointing god we desire the flow of your spirit I've given of myself today and I ask that it flow throughout this place. That it would flow throughout this congregation. <laughs> 